cringe. In the depths of the night, there has always been a place on the internet for free expression and all audiences to be themselves, no matter how silly, how artsy, or how whimsical one may come off. Trends, media, and art spaces stem from a popular thing or something that everyone is talking about, and if not that, it's different sized spaces of communities where people come together and bond. To an extent, it can be related to children, younger people, youthful audiences, and being so Free in the wind. These trends can be at the peak of their popularity, or they can be a few years after they have their crown. And if it isn't related to a community or a popular thing, it can be general harassment or feeling away about somebody just because they're artsy or open. This, in all of its definitions, is what cringe culture is, or what it was. W what I believe should be a was. I had a part in a video with a friend recently about cringe culture, what it is and how it affects people. I didn't say much, just uh, a little bit. Yeah. Dude, you're old as shit, don't, don't speak like that, that's cringe. To start it off, cringe culture being a title feels absolutely wrong to me. There is no need to have a name for a group of people who wish to express themselves and like certain things. It feels condescending and has a derogatory expense no matter which way you attempt to use it. Luckily, cringe culture is a title that isn't used very often nowadays, but it can be categorized pulled at any moment. In my memory, this culture birthed from one specific era. I'm cringing into oblivion, dude. The cancer is real. In 2016, there was the surge of an era where everything was trash and you couldn't like shit. I mean, being a dick was fine, but liking anything was very much not. Hey, what's up? It's Lenny McMemmer here, spicy as always. So today we are gonna look though the best fandom to ever exist. The under- This was the worst era ever. Basically, you were cringing one way or the other. This thing comes out, kids love it, people make content out of it, then it becomes cringe to like it or act that way. Or it's something freeing and you're, uh, you're lame. A lot of these people that enjoyed things spat on it, believing that liking things was lame and it was time to move on and it was much cooler to bully people. For example, Five Nights at Freddy's was something a lot of people loved, but in the era of 2016 to like 2018-ish, it was a trend to like hate it and make fun of it and just go you could replace FNAF with multiple other types of media in that sentence and it would still work. But now, it's fine again, really. Uh, Security Breach was nice. Uh, the movie was a fun theater experience. And it resides in the window where it was just a fun trend to clap and laugh at people for enjoying something. And you just go right back to where you were before. We all like this thing again. We were never against it ever. If not with a specific piece of media or fandom like Five Nights at Freddy's or insert anything else like My Little Pony, Undertale, My Hero Academia, Bende, Among Us, uh, fuck Among Us, uh, it could truly be anything. But in today's era, I truly believe that cringe culture is dead. At least it should be. My reasoning on this relies on a theory that I utmost believe is the reason why cringe culture thrives so dominantly, and why people had to place themselves in a chokehold to fend off trying to enjoy something that they loved, uh, because they had a pink pony avatar with a metal band cutie mark. This theory is based on nostalgia, growing up, and general negativity. Cringe culture and free artistic expression can sometimes be related to children's behavior. A lot of it involves children, loving music that isn't the best to critics' opinions, like a FNAF song for example, and wearing a costume related to a game to school because you like it, or I don't know, making an OC because you want to start drawing. These are new and exciting creative pathways, and those can be very often associated with youth. So why is, or why was it such an issue that people were this open? Is it because children are unapologetically enthusiastic about what they like? Is that seen as naive. Being forced to quote grow up because they equate being youthful to being cringe and immature is more depressing in itself. If there was a kid who really loved a character and wanted to dress as Sans and go on YouTube with it, I would support them instead of throwing them over and setting up a camera to go, this person is so freaking cringe guys. You see, I was a kid once. No, you were not. Yes, I was. Nuh uh huh. Nuh -uh. Yeah. -huh. I was a kid who was into a variety of media and was very open about his expression during this internet era. I was into shit that came off like it was for losers. I loved Star Wars. I played Minecraft and Roblox. And then I indulged in multiple fandoms Undertale, FNAF, Homestuck, and fucking My Little Pony. At the same time with all of these things, I was going undercover and roleplaying that I was a vampire online. Yet in 2016, I broke away from all of my roots and I made fun of anybody around the block for liking most of everything I just said above. It was lame, it was boring, and I thought you were stupid and gay if you liked those things. There's nothing wrong with this game.
I used to bully people for just playing this game. I don't know why. It's just the game, it's, it's not that deep. I carried through with this hatred and considered things cringe for a bit until a few years later when I came to terms and realized fondling around and harassing people for what they liked was much more pathetic than being a dork. It seems like throughout time, a lot of people who had the same mindset seemed to form themselves over time and realized, oh shit, why did we hate the very things we love? Which is why it's very important to protect the youth. Cringe can be linked to youthful expression and hating on people for being themselves can be a direct equation to harassing the youth, taking away their safe space. Kids nowadays need to be protected from the hatred of cringe culture and being true to yourself. There's a plethora of new content on the internet that kids nowadays like. Shit like Among Us and Lethal Company and the amazing Digital Circus and Poppy's Playtime and all that shit. The fandoms that I thrived in as a kid and truly loved are now appreciated by the older audiences, and there are kids who are the same age now as we were back then, enjoying and consuming content the exact same way before. Except, I don't think the climate of the internet is anywhere near as toxic or hateful as it used to be, at least in fandom spaces, which is something that needs to be kept up. The fandom is an important space. It provides you with a platform to interact with other people like you, find things in common, get along, make friends, fall in love, make uh, money. It's a sanctuary for you, and it's important to have a sanctuary. If you don't, a lot of stuff might feel lacking, especially if you're unapologetically, I don't know, you. Across the internet, we've seen many eras where cringe culture has affected people. But the truth to it is, it's dead to me because I believe there is a truth to the renaissance of self-expression. Kids nowadays need to be protected from the hatred of cringe culture and being true to yourself. I feel like promoting individuality helps with that because the truth to it is, life is short really is. And if you're a grown man making videos on the internet on or threads on Twitter, witch hunting little kids or even people your own age because they fuck with Fortnite and your profile picture is Chad from Berserk, I think you're like worse. Maybe. There is nothing wrong with enjoying things. Enjoying things is all a part of life and art is nothing separated. Don't complain that kids today don't act their age when you make fun of them for doing so. And please don't knock little Timmy over for wearing a Freddy Fazbear costume. And even if you aren't a kid, you can't have that youthful touch and enjoy things freely without it having to be seen as childish or cringy. That's just the truth. I do finances and I have a business degree on the way. I also thoroughly enjoy my family, uh, my wife and my eight kids and my three houses. No, but really, I have aspects to myself that are seen as mature and at the same time, I really love Undertale. And you know what? I still love Creepypasta and the Living Tombstones music. I played Fortnite, or I did. It's possible. Dude, I'm about to have a degree. I roleplay, but like in a cool way. I promise you that this is like way cooler than it looks. I can't lie, that's kind of cringe. In the end, with proper protection and full understanding of the youthful freedom of expression, cringe culture is dead. Bury it and protect the culture instead. And we should also protect my patrons. Thank you to Kennedy Carson, Mimi Diggs, and Kitty Dog. My Patreon is linked below, and thank you for watching. Per usual, love you. This isn't cringy. This house looks very robable.